The stock market had one of the worst weeks on record. It has been one drop after another as we see the compounding effect only making matters worse. First it was the VIX in January-February. Then everything began to go haywire. FANG stocks held the entire US market above water. Once October came, everything dramatically fell. As we approach the end of 2018, there were virtually no assets which didn't perform poorly. But no worries, the Fed will come to the rescue, right? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what has happened in the markets for the week. I'm going to give you some details that I think are extremely important to be able to figure all of this out. So let's begin by taking a look at what happened. The Dow lost 6.8%. It's down 1,600 plus points on the week, the worst percentage drop since October of 2008. The NASDAQ down 8% on the week, 22% from its peak, and that brings it into a bear market. The S&P is not far behind. It's down 18% from its high, and you're looking at the worst December performance since 1931. Both the Dow and the S&P are now in the red for 20 2018 by at least 9%. This is not looking good for US markets right now. I'm going to give you a comparison between that and the rest of the world, so stay tuned. 30 risks to the markets in 2019. This is out of Deutsche Bank. And the number one on this list, algo-driven risk, parity-driven fire sale in equities and credit continues. If that continues to go in this direction, you are going to have a trigger eventually that gets flipped. It's going to happen at some point unless they're able to reverse it. And the only way they can do that is with some sort of TARP-type bailout, some sort of quantitative easing, and they go into the markets directly and intervene. We'll see what happens. Right now, we are talking about a significant decline Look at some of these FANG stocks that are down 30 plus percent. Some of the best performing stocks up until October suddenly became the most significant declines. Year to date relative performance, guess what? The VIX, the worst level of manipulation, is in the VIX, and we see it right here. Actually, believe it or not, 102%. You can see natural gas did well wheat, cocoa, oats, palladium, and of course, you want to mention the US dollar. And pretty much everything else is in the negative, no matter where you look. There's another chart here, 2018 ranked returns. This is showing us basically a sea of red. Everywhere you look, there's nothing but red for the most part. It's unbelievable to see how many different assets are in the negative. In fact, it's 93% of all assets in 2018 have a negative return. Nothing worked for investors this year. Nearly every major asset class is in the red for 2018. This is just what I was talking about. Cash in the form of money market funds is the only asset that have had a decent positive return in 2018. That's the type of thing you get when you're in a recession, but they just haven't admitted it. It's been a short period of time since October where the market really started to take a beating. So we'll see what happens in the first quarter of 2019. Investors blame the unwinding of the Fed stimulus and the possible end of the economic expansion. That was supposed to be a temporary measure and you can't support it without it. Who else is buying the shares? Who else is out there ensuring that all of the asset-backed securities, all of the treasuries, and everything that the Federal Reserve was there buying, who's there to purchase it now? Why is the Fed's stimulus package so important? Even though we're told, look, it's $4 trillion, the market is much bigger than $4 trillion, therefore it's not going to be a problem, but suddenly it is. Well, you can't fool us, that's for sure. Oil is now down under $46 a barrel on the WTI, currently sitting at $45.59. The European markets were pummeled this week as well, so it's not just the US markets. Wherever you look, it seems to be in the red. Now we compare the MSCI USA versus the world excluding the US, and the green line is the US, and that has definitely closed the gap in with the rest of the world. 
I showed this same chart over the last several months, and this has been starting to converge closer and closer as the months have gone on. And it's very interesting to see this one now starting to get very close, although the rest of the world is also doing very bad. So it seems like everything is falling in concert. This chart here is basically just showing us that we've had the worst week since 2008. And we are looking at the NASDAQ right now, moving into a bear market, moving below all the moving averages, and it has been significantly beaten down right now, just from basically October up until present. And that's not normal. What's happening today is a complete destruction of all of the gains that have been experienced over the last year, over the last two years, depending on what you look at. This is the FANG index, FANG plus index, moving back into the levels that we saw in late October of 2017. So this has been beaten down severely here. Looking at the FANG plus, they rose up. They did so well, even after everything came down in, as I said, late January, early February, you saw the markets tank. But the FANG Plus stocks was where everybody was putting their money because they were looking for somewhere to invest. So they decided to put the money into the FANG Plus. They did so and they just roared higher and it did very well for them. And you could see though, however, that it never recovered from that point. FANG Plus index looks like on this chart here, peaked out actually in June. And ever since then, it's just been falling through the floor. Goldman Sachs is down, I believe, 42% from its peak. This is supposedly one of the biggest companies in the world in terms of their power and their reach. They are in basically every government around the world. They have their people, their alumni, and it goes to show you how every company is vulnerable. We are looking at one of the global systemically important banks, truly a powerhouse in many ways, and their stock is down 42%. Imagine what the potential here, if a company like this goes into some level of failure or bankruptcy, or it's unable to fund its operations, imagine what could happen as a result. Global equity market cap, you're seeing now $17.2 trillion erased from the market cap this year. It's huge. No matter how you look at it, it's going back into the levels we haven't seen since early 2017. It looks like it's just continuing. And it's not just what happened since October, although that has been when it has fallen, but the real problem began at the beginning of 2018, and we need to highlight that. It was basically a handful of stocks that went higher from the beginning of 2018 up until October. It was just a handful of them that was able to keep the market afloat. But today, that's not the case anymore, and virtually all assets have found themselves in the red. Record redemptions from bank loan funds, weekly fund flows, and you can just see the blue lines on the right hand side here. It's unbelievable to see how far and how significant these drops really are. And what I believe is entirely correlated with what we're seeing in the markets today is something that I show you over and over and over again, and that is the central bank assets. So the blue line right here, that's the central bank assets, and they peaked out at the beginning of 2018. However, since then, there has been less and less. The Federal Reserve has been weaning off. You can see the Bank of Japan doing so, and other central banks have either stopped printing or they are basically just allowing it to slowly wean off. Some of them are just printing less money now, but regardless, the total volume is declining. That just so happens to correlate with what we're seeing. And hold that thought for a moment. But I just want to note the fact that up until this point, this chart goes from late 2016 up until present, everything is correlated. I've shown you over the years countless times where you see the S&P 500 matching up perfectly with the global central bank balance sheets. Perfectly almost. Little variations along the way, but for the most part, like this, it's a straight line. And then suddenly, when the central banks stop printing, when they start increasing interest rates like the Federal Reserve, everything changes. Is it a coincidence? Of course not. There is no coincidence in this case. So very quickly, global systemically important banks falling down, 
truly an, an absolute destruction level. This is the MSCI world, excluding the US, and this is the NASDAQ. You could see what has happened here, all completely correlated, as far as I'm concerned, with the central bank activity. And before I go to the article that I want to show you here, if you're still here at this point in the video, I think you'll enjoy what I have to say. So this is one of the top individuals at Deutsche Bank, a failing institution, and he had the audacity to say this. We're talking about algorithms and how they are a problem, okay? I have a PhD in economics. I am the chief economist at Deutsche Bank Securities, and I spend all day thinking about the explanations of why the stock market goes up and down. Usually, there's a good explanation, be it from earnings revisions, new economic data, or surveys of sentiment. The very unique thing about the market since October is that we have on all three fronts seen little change whatsoever. If you look at these data, it is just really strong, and it can't justify the decline we've seen in the stock market. If you can't explain why the market is moving, you should be suspicious of the moves the market makes. And he goes on talking about algorithms and so on. All right. So this individual here clearly feels very good about his educational background. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not judging that. However, you don't use that to make an argument for why you don't understand what's happening in the markets. Do you have the foresight to understand that the central banks have ruined this market. They have destroyed it permanently. Quantitative easing is new and it doesn't fit into your models. And so you're disappointed with the results of the market. However, you need to understand what is going on in behind the scenes. Stop looking at earnings revisions. My goodness, I can't believe that individuals trust their money with people like this. No particular offense to this individual. I'm, I'm speaking in generalities. People are very high and mighty and they feel good about themselves. However, people's pensions are at stake. People's savings are at stake. When the financial system collapses, there is going to be a lot of pain. And some people have to stand up for those individuals now, not after it happens. They have to stand up now or else they're going to get trampled when the day comes. It's already looking terrible. Right now, we have one of the worst markets we've seen since the financial crisis. 2015 was bad. 2018 looks like it's going to be worse. Only a few trading sessions left. And most people have no idea what's about to hit them. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. And last but not least, if you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have it all. You can get everything you need in the link in the description. If you want the audiobook version instead, you can get that at themoneygps.com.